As new genres develop, trends and methods grow out of each other as staff move around. Not only do the original products become reliant on their predecessor's success, but the process of adaptation often becomes conformative as well. The Absolute Duo writer did scripts for Infinite Stratos, the Fafnir director did storyboard for Sky Wizards Academy, the Mahogka director was brought on to direct Astro Squad, and so on so on. So, long story short, the process of adapting a relatively new genre that grew out of the success of the Raildex franchise meant that techniques and ideas became uniform. But what if you take a group of people who have been completely blocked off from this? What if you get a writer who worked on one of the debut entries into the genre and surround him with a whole load of people who have spent the past decade working on their own unique style and have never been exposed to these adaptation trends from a production standpoint? Well, you get Myriad Colors Phantom World, of course. Phantom World may be far from being the anime of the season, mostly because that title is reserved for Degashi Kashi, but it's funny, it's light, it's engaging, and at times brilliantly stupid. It starts off with a visualization of popular mind tricks introducing the world premise, however more subtly it immediately manages to build the main character's personality of being an overly serious nerd, and more importantly with this short line from the mascot character, it immediately sets a much lighter tone as the entire scene goes from being dramatic to just lovely with the following opening full of dancing bears and cosplaying pixies supporting this. It's not a subversion and it's not a satire of how Science Magic Academy shows have a huge tendency to start out with over dramatic scenes, it's just playing out under a similar context whilst applying Ishihara and Kyoani directorial stylistic input and then doing it a bit tongue in cheek. Keep this tongue in cheek bit in mind because it's a big part of that adaptation here. For example, Front twin tails that look like bike handles. I rest my case. Even the battles are mostly played for laughs, with one of which being turned into a limbo contest. But one of the most widespread concerns about Phantom World comes from its more fan y moments. Whilst most of the episode had the fortune of being detached from the genre tropes, this is the connection that nobody really wanted to see. But it's not content that matters in anime, it's context. One of the more unique scenes showed the main character about to grab a character's breast, twisting himself around to avoid the moment, referencing it as a visual novel cliche, and then the punchline is that he ended up under her skirt instead. And it's clearly self-referential humour, and once again it isn't outright satire, but it is just tongue in cheek. Everything about Phantom World emanates far more personality than so many other attempts have, and it manages to make up for bad writing with strong direction in some cases. For instance, there's a scene in the second episode where they need to catch a phantom that peeks on girls changing, and so after a short slapstick scene where Harahiko doesn't get the message, they decide that the girls will need to change for the phantom to appear. Oh dear, I said, that sounds like fucking trash. I wish 2012 was a documentary so that I can take the rest of the world with me as I burn alive in the Earth's crust. But. From what is written as a dodgy scene, it's transformed into something genuinely really fun. It breaks out into a really jumpy, upbeat soundtrack from Kosuke Moriba, his first anime soundtrack by the way, and delivers a scene that's so fast and full of slapstick, running jokes and silly moments that it ends up being a blast. Harihiko gets really smug about his new familiar until it turns into a small dog, he ends up being thrown out of a window repeatedly, and everything just turns to chaos in this funny little scene. Even the expositional world premise has a degree of personality to it. Phantom World does employ exposition, with the main character going on to tell another character all about how phantoms came about, even though she almost definitely already knows this, but through careful framing and immediately bringing us into a POV shot, it doesn't try to hide that he's just talking to us, leading on to one of my favourite lines within the episode, 
It's common knowledge, but I'll explain it anyway, a habit that is mocked later on by Ruru as he goes on to describe how the show is basically yokai watch with tits. But anyways, the point is that despite Phantom World very much appearing to be settling into a genre that has plagued the past five years with Infinite Stratos, Mahor Sensor, Unlimited Fucking Fafnir, World Break, Sky Wizards Academy, Mahorka, Undefeated Bahamut, Chronicle, Trinity 7, Blade Dance, Absolute Duo and more, it is adapting the same tropes in different ways and for a different purpose. You don't have to like it, honestly I don't like it that much personally and it's far from being one of my favourite shows of the season, but I do think it's worth a watch just for the fun of it. It's also the best animated show of the season, but I guess that was a given. Thanks for watching The Kenneper Effect, let me know what shows you'd like to see covered in the comment section below and make sure to check out our Anifix podcast on the winter 2016 season.